A car bomb in Afghanistan has killed at least 24 people and wounded more than 100 others, including children. Most of the victims were students staying at a guest house while preparing for exams. No group has yet claimed responsibility for the blast in Logar province, which struck as people broke their fast during the Islamic holy month of Ramadan. The attack comes as the United States and NATO begin formally withdrawing troops after a 20-year war with the Taliban. This is it? Yeah. Western military involvement in Afghanistan began nearly 20 years ago when U.S.-led forces went in just days after the September 11, 2001 terror attacks. The mission of the U.S. and its allies? To make the world safe from terrorism by removing the Taliban, which had allowed Osama bin Laden and his al-Qaeda network to operate from Afghan territory. The Taliban regime was quickly overthrown, but achieving peace in Afghanistan has proved elusive. With international assistance, a civilian government was set up in Kabul, led by President Hamid Karzai. But the Taliban regrouped and began carrying out attacks and regaining control of parts of the country. Despite a peak of 140,000 NATO troops in 2011, international and Afghan forces have been unable to defeat the Taliban. In 2014, NATO ended its combat mission and transferred full security control to Kabul. Since then, NATO-led troops have helped train and assist their Afghan counterparts. Currently, about 9,500 international soldiers remain. The U.S., which supplies the largest contingent, has announced it will complete its troop withdrawal by September. The Taliban have sought to negotiate with the Afghan government, but so far talks have stalled. A recent U.S. intelligence analysis concluded that the Kabul government would likely struggle to hold the Taliban at bay once foreign troops leave the country. And for more on this, I'm joined by Roxana Shapur, a journalist in London, but formerly based in Kabul, where she worked for the United Nations as well. Roxana, with the troop withdrawal, how likely is it that the Taliban will return to power? Well, I think the hope still is that the Taliban can be convinced and pressured particularly uh, by their allies in Pakistan, to come back to the negotiating table and to try and uh, reach a negotiated uh, peace. Uh, this still is a hope that many people uh, hold to. Uh, but if that fails and the indications uh, are uh, that, that this is looking increasingly likely, then I think that we're not looking at a situation where the Taliban will immediately take over on the 12th of September after the U.S. withdrawal, but that um, the Afghan people will see uh, uh, heightened levels of violence. Uh, the possibility of civil war obviously looms heavy in the, in the distant horizon. Um, and then if history is any indication, maybe uh, the fall of the government, uh, but not in the immediate term. And as the American and other NATO troops withdraw, do we have any indication of what public opinion is on this move? Hmm. Um, well, I can I can I can tell you that my friends and contacts in Afghanistan um, are. Uh, are uh, approaching the uh, the imminent arrival of this day with a quite a quite a bit of anxiety and trepidation. Of course, so much is unclear, and particularly when it comes to things like uh, the rights of women. Uh, uh, you know, hanging on to what women, Afghan women, have achieved over the last 20 years. There is a there is quite a bit of anxiety. There is. I I am talking to some people though who are saying that. Um, they're looking forward to this day coming that, you know, it might just be what Afghan, Afghans need to come together and reach some sort of an internal consensus to move things forward. Okay, Roxana Shapur from London, thank you for that insight. Pleasure, thank you.